Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to do a couple of examples to illustrate hypothesis testing for one sample. Okay, so for our first example, we're going to do a hypothesis test for a population mean when the population standard deviation is known. Okay, so here, um, I'd let you read the first example. Okay, the Mac Burger restaurant chain claims that the mean waiting time for customers is three minutes with a population standard deviation of one minute. The quality assurance department found in a sample of 50 customers at the Gombak branch that the mean waiting time was 2.75 minutes. At the 5% significance level, can we conclude that the mean waiting time is three minutes? Okay, so first things first, let's uh, determine, uh, let's identify um, what are the things that we have from the question. Okay, so they've given us several figures here. One here is three minutes. Okay, then they've also given us here. Okay, so this is basically population standard deviation. Okay, so here, okay, it tells us we know sigma. Okay, so this is what it means. Sigma is known. Okay, and here three minutes and they also give us here 2.75 minutes so which one is which which one is the mu which one is the x bar okay so here okay sometimes it can get a bit confusing so in order to not confuse yourself you need to read the um, statements very carefully it says here in a sample of 50 customers the mean waiting time is so that means this 2.75 is x bar therefore this three minutes here is mu okay so you need to determine which one is mu which one is x bar okay 50 here is n sample okay n all right okay so let's do the six step hypothesis testing okay step one remember what we need to do step one is we need to write the hypothesis okay i'm sure many of you have better writings than me okay so take your time in writing here. I want to be quick. I don't want the video to be too long. Okay, first things first, right? Now, what is your null hypothesis? Okay, it states here, can we conclude that the mean waiting time is three minutes? Okay, now, is means equals to, right? So, yeah, we're saying the mu, we hypothesize the mu to be three minutes. Why mu? As I mentioned in the previous video, when we write hypothesis, it is always for the population. So here, of course, we're writing it as a population mean. Okay, alternatively, what is the opposite of equals to three? Not equals to three. Okay, done, yeah? So is this a one-tailed test or is it a two-tailed test? This is a two-tailed test. Why? Because as I mentioned to you before, one-tailed test shows a particular direction in the sign for the alternate hypothesis. Whereas here, the sign is not equals to what it means is we don't know whether it's more than or less than. It could be both. It could be either one. Okay, so since we don't know what the sign is, it's a two-tailed test. Now, step two is to basically write down our level of confidence. Okay, what is our level of confidence in this question? It says you're at the 5% significance level, yeah? So alpha is given, 0 0.05. Okay, so it's a two-tailed test, 0 0.05 alpha. Step three, okay, what is step three? We need to calculate our test statistic. Okay, so here's the important bit. Remember, test statistic can either be Z or T. Now, in our situation here, which is the best distribution to use? Okay, we have two very important information. Number one, we know the population standard deviation. Okay, so sigma is known. Okay, so the minute we know sigma, we can use Z. Okay, another one, just to double check, we have a large sample size, 50. Okay, so because of that, we use the Z distribution. Okay, why don't you justify here? We use Z because one is N is greater than 30, large sample size. Another one is sigma is known. So please justify. You get points for that. Okay, so let's write it down. What is our Z here? Remember the formula for Z is X bar minus mu over, since we know sigma, we write sigma here over the square root of N. Okay, what is our X bar just now? 2.75 mu is 3. In fact, here we wrote it right. Mu is 3. So 2.75 minus 3 over 1. Okay, uh, 1 is the population standard deviation over the square root of 50. Okay, maybe you want to pause the video for a while and work this out. Okay, so what you'll get is up here it's negative or minus 0 0.25 over 
0.1414. You divide that and you will get a minus 1.77. Okay, so it's usual to keep the z values to two decimal spaces because uh, that's basically how you see them in the z table. Okay? All right, now step number four. Okay, maybe, I think I'll do step number four here because I'm running out of space. Okay, step number four, what we need to do is we need to uh, do two things. One is to sketch and to determine the critical value or critical values, and we need to write down the rejection rule. Okay, so let's start by sketching. Can you see that? Yeah, okay, sketching the distribution. Okay, so basically we know from our hypothesis that the mu is 3, right? So this is our x bar mu. Okay, but when we, um, the minute we standardize this, we get a 0. Okay, so 0. So some students don't even write this 3. Okay, they just straight away write z. That's not a problem. You can write both. Okay, later maybe I'll just keep on, I'll skip the x bar altogether and just write um, z here. Okay, so zero. Um, okay, some students ask me, why is it here x bar and not mu? Okay, remember, mu here is what we hypothesize, but do we really know what mu is? We don't, right? That is why in the previous topic, sampling distribution of sample mean, we assume that the mean of the sampling distribution of sample mean is uh, approaching or is equal to the population mean. So anyway, um, let's go back here. Um, so it's zero here. Now we know it's a two-tailed test, guys. Two-tailed test meaning we know that we've got a two rejection area. So here would be our first rejection area where we reject the now. Here is another rejection area, so where we reject the now. And because we've got two rejection areas, the alpha, we need to divide it into two, right? So alpha here is 0 0.025 or 2.5%. Alpha here is 0 0.025 or 2.5%. So in the center here would be our acceptance area whereby we will do not reject the null hypothesis. So it's actually 95%. You can write it down here if you want to, but if you don't, it's fine. Okay? So we know this is zero. So what is our critical values here? Remember, our critical value, I, I mentioned to you that if it's a two-tailed test, you can apply uh, the shortcut from what we've learned in confidence interval. Okay, so we know that okay, the significant, okay, there's actually um, a complement value, yeah, between conf um, level of significance and level of, oh my god, this is level of significance, guys. Oh my god. Okay. Jeez, sorry. Anyway, no, we're all humans. Okay, so it's level of significance here. Okay, alpha, 5%. Okay. So anyway, here, where was I? Right, so we know that these two are 5%. So what's the balance here? 95%. So in other words, okay, a significance level of 5% would mean a 95% confidence level, right? So we know that if 95% confidence level, that is reflected by plus minus 1.96. Okay, if you can't remember this, you go back to the topic confidence interval, okay? So now what we do is we need to write down our rejection rule. Okay, see, it's a two-tailed test. Therefore, we've got two rejection areas. Therefore, we will have two rejection rules, okay? Reject the now if, when? Greater than, if our, what? Our test statistic. So what was our test statistic just now? Z, yeah, okay? Z, okay? Some books write it as Z calc, as in we calculated the Z values, but if you just want to put it as Z, it's not a problem, okay? The reason is because, um, our critical value is also z, yeah? Okay, so let me just make it a bit more general. Okay, reject the null if the z calculated is greater than the z critical value. Okay, so it might be a bit confusing to write this way. That is why people normally, you just, um, you don't have to write this one. You straight away write it as 1.96, okay? So, so alternatively, you can say reject the null if z calculated is greater than 1.96, okay? Or if the z calc is less than minus 1.96, okay? So these two are your uh, rejection rules, okay? Of course, this would be a minus as well, okay? So now, what we do is, step number five, we make our decision. Step five, you can actually combine step five and six together because five is making the decision and six is making the conclusion, so which you can just write it together. Okay, so what we do is we compare, yeah? We see. Minus 1.77, where does it lie 
in this diagram? Does it fall in the rejection area or does it fall in the acceptance area? Minus 1.77, guys. It's somewhere here, yeah? Okay, so this is minus 1.77, so it falls in the acceptance area. Therefore, we will need to not reject the null. Okay, so let's write it down. Okay, since the test statistic okay, lies in the acceptance region, Okay, we, what do we do? What's the answer? Do not reject. Okay, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so basically that's it. You already made your decision. This is step number five. And don't forget step number six is to, to make an interpretation. And we conclude, and we can conclude that, okay, to make the interpretation or conclusion, Let's go back to the context, the story here. We said do not reject, right? I'm going to highlight that. So you do not reject. What does it mean by do not reject? Go back, have you? We do not reject, so we take this. So what does it mean? We have sufficient evidence to suggest that the mu or the mean waiting time for customers is in fact three minutes. Okay, so we can do that. So we can conclude that. Okay, let's put it in writing. Conclude that the mean waiting time is in fact three minutes now if you want you can make it of more um, detailed by saying that based on our sample we find sufficient evidence to uh, support our hypothesis in that the mean waiting time is three minutes okay, you can do that as well okay so just now we've done the example for a two-tailed test now let's try and check out this second example which is also a one sample hypothesis testing for population mean but this time it's a one tailed test okay as you can see the question is exactly the same except now the last part okay can we conclude that the mean waiting time is less than three minutes okay so this is how you know okay it's one tailed or two tailed so you've got to pick up the details okay you've got to see the signals all right so same thing here, three minutes is the mu, okay? One minute here is the population standard deviation, so population standard deviation is known. Sample is 50, we've got a large sample size, and our sample mean is 2.75, so everything else is the same, guys, okay? And the significance level is 5%. Okay, so let's write down step one. What do we need to do? We need to write down the hypothesis. Write the hypothesis, okay? Now, okay, remember, always write the null hypothesis first. Even if you can figure out, here actually, here they give you the alternate hypothesis, okay? Right? This is the alternate because remember, the null is always equals. Always equals. It's either equals to or greater than equals to or less than equals to. But here, less than, greater than, they're all alternate hypotheses, okay? So we know this is alternate. So you can actually write it down, alternate first. But remember, although you want to write down the alternate first, it's always at the bottom. Okay, so the alternate hypothesis is mu less than three minutes. Therefore, what is your null hypothesis? Mu is, okay, here you have a choice. You can either put it as equals to, or you can put it as greater than equals to. Not a problem, because they mean the same thing. They're both equals, okay? So I don't deduct points, even if you put it as equals to. Not a problem. Okay, it's just that if you do it this way, perhaps your interpretation would be more accurate. All right? Um, step two is to write down our alpha. Again, it's 5%. Alpha is significance level. Okay. And this is a one-tailed test. You can put it there. One-tailed test. Remember, how do you know it's a one-tailed test? The sign for the alternate hypothesis points to a particular direction. It could either be greater than or lesser than. Okay. It's a two-tailed test if here is not equals to. Because you don't know which sign it is. Okay. Step number three. You want to calculate the test statistic. Okay, what's our test uh, statistic, guys? Is it any different? No, it's the same. Okay, everything else actually is the same except this part. Okay, so it's still z. X bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n. And what was it just now? We got minus 1.77. No, let's just write it down again. 2.75 minus 3 over 1 over the square root of 50 
and we get minus 1.77. So if you notice, everything else is the same. The working is the same. Okay, now step four, what we want to do here, we want to sketch. Uh, here's a bit different, okay, because last time, just now, we sketched for a two-tailed test. Now we're going to draw for a one-tailed test. Now the mean here is three, because we hypothesized it as three. Okay, when we standardize three, we get a zero, okay? So here, if you can see here, I'm just straight away writing it as Z. I don't put at all any X values, okay? So we know it's a one-tailed test, therefore we only have one rejection area. So our rejection area will be to the left, because here we have the alternate hypothesis is it's less than three. Less than three means less than zero. Okay, so it's here. So here is our rejection area, whereby we reject the null. And now, since we only have one tail, all of the alpha, there's it, all of the alpha goes here. So this is 5%, okay? Right, so here would be our acceptance area. So here's where we do not reject the null. Okay, so it's reject the null, do not reject the null. So now, next step is to write down or to find out what is our critical value. Remember, this is one tail test, 5% alpha. Okay, if you recall in the previous video how to find the Z value, so please do check that out. So here we know since it's to the left of the mean, therefore it's minus, yeah, minus 1.65, okay? So this is how we get the uh, Z value. So now we write down the rejection rule. Reject, okay, basically we are just explaining our diagram reject the null if our test statistic which is z calc is less than what less than minus 1.65 okay so now step number five and six together you just make your decision and conclusion we can see if we compare what's our test statistic where does it fall where does it fall okay, let me take another color pen okay minus 1.77 is actually smaller right than minus 1.65 it's somewhere here so what happened, guys? We reject, yeah? Okay, so let's write it down. Since the test statistic, okay, lies in the rejection area, we reject the null hypothesis. And don't forget to conclude, so we can conclude and conclude that okay let's conclude okay, we reject yeah rejects so what does that mean let's go back up here reject the numbers we accept the alternate what does it mean so we are saying that the mean or average waiting time is actually less than three minutes okay so that's basically what we're seeing we have sufficient evidence from the sample to suggest that the mean waiting time is less than three minutes